All right, it's uh, Monday, November 13th. I'm just going to do a wander through the real estate market here. I thought I'd uh, cast my camera on and invite you along for the journey, show you what I can see and see what's going on out there. It's a, it's a different time of year, um, mid-November, December. market's always a little bit slower than usual. There's always activity going on, as you'll see, but things definitely do slow down uh, as we get closer to Christmas and probably into the beginning of January, February, and then March, things start picking back up again. But here, here's what we can see. So this is uh, so the main main screen on uh, our internal system. So you can see we've got 31 new listings in the last seven days. This is based in Nanaimo. Um, we've got uh, 11 that have sold subjects been removed just waiting to complete we got 13 that are trying to find uh, their place in the market uh, 13 price reductions one decided to go up up in price uh, and six have sold six expired and three withdrawn so all of these ones expire usually turn around and coming back on as new listings just to reset the days on market but uh, those are the quick stats so if we do some quick math here if we combine our pending with our solds we have 17 so 17 houses have sold. There's a total of 31 houses on the market. Or, I'm sorry, that's a total of 31 new houses on the market, but only 17 have sold. If we do a quick pop in here for a quick search, I'm just going to base this off of single family in Nanaimo, active listings. Uh, let me get these things out of my way here. Oh, over here. Um, so we got a total of 349. So that's where it starts getting a little, little more dicey. Is we got 349 listings, single-family home in Nanaimo, and when we pop back over here, we've only sold in the last seven days a total of 617. So that's the one. It's also easier to take a quick look through here to see what single-family's done. Uh, if we turn on our pending and are sold say in the last uh, 60 days, the last two months as well as so looking at just pending we got 86 that have had subject removal out of that 349 they're just waiting to complete and then if we look at the ones that sold in the last uh, two months 63 in the last two months uh, sold so that one's uh, that's a little bit lower of a number so pending so if we combine the pending and 86 and these 63, that's a total of 149 have sold in the last uh, two months, say two to three months, because uh, sold, uh, could, that's just when they completed, uh, out of a total of 349. So we're sitting with, oh, I'll just say we use, use our two month number there, we're about 75 houses per month, and we got 350 uh, listings. So the definitely there's a, a lot more supply than demand on the market right now. And that starts shifting into a bit of a buyer's market. When there's lots of choices and not many people are buying, that's when we start seeing these price changes here. So not a lot price, price out of those 349, we only had 13 that had a price reduction last seven days. I can't go any further than that seven on this. But um, yeah, so some people are trying to find where, they, where their spot on the market is. All right, so next thing I want to pop in and have a quick look at here is... Uh, Actually, yeah, let's start with here, and we're going to take a look at these, all these single-family homes that have sold in the last, either waiting waiting to complete or have actually completed in the last two months. And I'm just going to hit results down here. Then we're going to hit, uh, have a quick look at the stats. Uh, tabular. Okay, so this is our, one of those of you who like uh, lots of numbers and data. I'll just quickly point out a few things in here. So here's our 349 active listings. Uh, the average listing price is 1.1 million. Uh, the median, if we take out the high and the lows and the land rate in the middle, 949 is the average of what's listed actively for sale. Um, average on the mark, days on market, these have been sitting here 53 days. Median on the middle is about 40 days on the market. And uh, here's a tax cess values. Uh, every, every time I do one of these, I'll always point out of how useless the tax cess value is. Uh, we got an average list price of 1.1 and an average assessed value of 8.72, and you got a median of 9.49 and 8.04. So, yeah, it doesn't uh, assess values. Uh, unfortunately, are very misleading. Okay, so of the 86 of the, so these are these are the hopefuls. These are people that uh, have listed their house. They hope their price is right. They hope someone's going to come buy it. But at this point, nobody has uh, agreed to buy these houses. These houses and these next two here, people have actually agreed to buy them. These people actually moved into the houses, and these ones are just waiting for their moving day to come. So if we take a look at these ones first, these will be the most recent. So usually when the house sells, I usually have about two weeks.
weeks for subject removals. It's doing your due diligence with house inspections and stuff like that. House inspections, um, financing approval, insurance approval, and on the rural properties, a septic and well uh, type of uh, uh, inspections that happen. Uh, but these guys uh, have gone through that phase. They've removed all their subjects, and they're just waiting for a completion. Completion on a home that's not tenanted usually is in 45 to 60 days. We usually don't see too much longer than that. The anomaly will be a little bit longer, but most of them are within a month and a half, two months from when they're written, when the offer is written until completion happens. Now here's where here's where it gets interesting. This is the numbers we're sort of watching for here. Is um, the average sale, so the average price original, average price sold. So these ones are, we're still sitting around, I think last time I did this was probably 98, it's been 97, 98% list to sale ratio. So they listed for 911,000 on average and sold for 872,000 on average. So that was a 97% list to sale ratio. And same thing on the median. Numbers are a little bit lower because it's the median, but we got a median price of 837 and a median list price of 864. Like I said, it was original. It's a little bit closer here. So this is what I'm sorry you should be looking at. So this is the list price. This was the original. So this is going to show price reductions. So there wasn't any price reductions on that maximum, the minimum there was. So the average original list price was 911. The average price once the ones that sold was 899 and then the average sale price was 872. So that's where you got the, the 3% of uh, less to sale ratio that shows up between these two numbers. And then on the median, uh, just sort of fine knocks out the highs and the lows. And on this one, we had an average sale price of 830, or median sale price of 837 and 844. So what this shows you is that if you're going to put an offer in on a house and uh, you hit the average for what everyone else has done, or the median, uh, if it was listed for 844, there's not a lot of negotiating happening right now. It's only about five, well, I suppose that five, six thousand um, dollars between. I got, uh, Five thousand there, uh, f three and four. Yeah, so seven, seven, roughly seven thousand dollars in negotiating room on eight hundred and thirty, eight hundred and forty-four thousand dollar home. So, uh, don't don't expect for big huge deals, even though it is turning more into a buyer's market. Um, like this is the the one that. Well, this was just the lowest price one. Uh, we don't have I don't have a stat here that'll show whatever had the, the biggest gain on this method, but typically there's not a lot. There's in order to have an average, there's some that sold above and some that uh, went lower. But uh, averaging out, uh, there's not not a lot of uh, not a lot of difference between what people are asking for and what they're getting. So. Um, okay, so lot, next one here is the sold. So these are the last two months worth of sales that have actually completed. Uh, sold signs are gone. Moving trucks have arrived, emptied, and moved away. And here's what we're seeing on those ones. So our average list price on sale. Okay, let's do this. Average original price was 943, and then the list price went all the way down to 807. So that shows some significant price reductions there. Because we went from an average of 943 down to an average, that was original when it was first listed, down to an average of 807 and an average sale of 788. So the last two months of sales are actually lower than uh, what we're seeing in the pendings. Now this could have been skewed by uh, some higher priced uh, properties that have sold that would have pulled this average up. Hard to say without looking into it, but this is interesting just looking at pure stats. And there's, it's a good good sample size here. We've got 86, 86 units we're sampling here and 63 here. So on the 63, on the median, just taking out the high and low, the average was actually, or the median was actually 30,000 less than the average. So our average house price for the last two months was sitting in that 750 to 780 range, whereas in the last couple of weeks it was 837 to 872 between median and average. So that is interesting. Uh, for, for a buyer's market, typically you'd notice, typically we'd expect this uh, list of, the list of sale ratio to start to uh, get bigger, 96%, 95%, and we'd also expect the average prices to be dropping as the price change has been happening. So that, that's interesting. Um, 
here's one other interesting point. Well, we've got, we've got 86 units versus 63. So this, I was just looking at these sums and that sort of lines up for about 20 more homes valuing out for the total. So that's neither here nor there. All right, so this number down here, the bottom is pretty much of no use. That just combines everything together. But if you combine all the actives, the pendings, and the solds, you get a bit of a mixed bag of stuff. And the average price is 837 but that doesn't really help us at all. Okay, days on market is one other thing here. So as we looked at the top here, we had 53 days on the market average for the active listings that are out there that haven't been bought yet. The ones that sold recently, we have 27 days median, 34 days uh, for pending. And then for the solds, we have just slightly higher shows that things were taking a little bit longer to sell uh, about a month, month and a half, two months ago were 44 days for the average and 37 for the median. Okay, so that was the main part I wanted to look at for the stats. Well, immediate stats. The other stat stats are over in this this area here. So I went through and I created some, some custom ones here just to save a bit of time. So what I want to start by looking at is, let's look at the days on market because we just talked about that one. We're going to use this one. Okay, so this is the last 10 years worth of data on the market showing days on market. So the length of time it took from when the house was listed to it actually sold. And you can tell that uh, during during 2022, this was our, our COVID world from 2020 through 2022, the average days on market was actually less than 10. And I mentioned this on past uh, one recordings I've done is that was artificially high because some houses were selling, would have sold the day they were listed, but they were being held back in order to give everyone a chance to come in. And also there's multiple offers on those. So that was interesting there when the market was red hot, then you can see that the days on market started to climb, 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 took a bit of a dip, climb, 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 all the way up to just under 50 back in, oh, do I have a date on here for show me? Okay, so that was October 22nd. There was days to sell. It was at, I don't know, it says 30, but it's not what's showing up here. And then this one here, February of 2023 was the peak year, uh, showing at around 50. We dropped back down and things started selling a little bit quicker, and now we're creeping back up again. So uh, some of this might be seasonal. Let's just adjust this to the last two years on this one just to get a little more granular on what we're seeing more recently. Generate. Where's your generate? Okay, so the last two years and we can sort of see that uh, April 2021 we're still in the COVID craze and then around March of 2022 everything sort of went and started going back to normal and then we're having this sort of a yo-yo effect here and starting to creep back up here again as the days of market is stretching out uh, 35 on here and I think we're seeing 40 on that other other list that we just looked at. Okay, so that's our days on market. Um, original price to sold price. This one, this is that 97% we're seeing right now. Let's just see what shows up on this one here. It's going to load. Okay, so the green line is what they listed for. The blue line is what they sold for. And... You can see where the blue line actually crosses over the green line here in a couple spots. I only went back five years in this one as far as I could go. But um, as we sort of came out into 2023, we started having a gap here between the, the two numbers. So list price there looks like at about 780, you know, like 779 there in January 2023, whereas uh, they were selling for, I don't know if this one's going to come in, but that's probably upper sixes low sevens on this one that's a that's a low dip on that one and yeah so that this shows shows that as this gaps bigger that's the larger percentage of uh, drop more negotiating room that's available so when this gets really close to each other you're definitely in a seller's market when it starts separating then we're more in a buyer's market and buyers are able to negotiate some better terms and get a little more of a discount off the list price Okay, next one here, in months of inventory, we sort of briefly touched on this, uh, looking at the big numbers at the beginning, but uh, this shows how many months it would take to sell all the inventory that we were currently holding. And you can sort of see some spikes here. Whenever the number is high, that means that we're definitely in a buyer's market and it's taking, there's a lot of options for buyers and they got lots to pick from. When it's really low, then that's our seller's market, like down here at the dip. Uh, through our COVID craze, we were down close to one month worth of market or one month worth of inventory. So 
if uh, we were one month worth of inventory right now, if we had 364 listings, we'd have 364 sales, and then that would be one month. But we're looking right now at six months worth of inventory according to the 6.1 as of October. So that's uh, another indication that we're in a buyer's market. We've got lots of supply and not as much demand. All right, next one here, historic price trend. This one's an interesting one because uh, Nanaimo's always had a history of going up and plateauing. Unfortunately, I'd love to be able to go back further, but unfortunately these charts only go back at the maximum of 10 years. But we can sort of see the trend here is of almost a plateau here from 2013 through about 2016, so those three years. And then in the beginning of 2016, we started a climb from our our 380 average here in the end of 2014, 2015, even right over here. Let's see what this one is. It'll give it to me. Might not. So that's that's about that 380, 390, up until the end of 2016, and then we climbed all the way up until we almost got to 600 here. Uh, so we bounced around a little bit, mid fives, upper fives, up until COVID-19 hit. COVID-19 hit, we had a bit of a drop as everyone said, what's going on? And then things just started taking off and then the average price went all the way up and it actually hit, depending on how you calculate this, I calculated numbers of, the, this is showing 900, well 900 is down here, but uh, I was doing calculations of live data during uh, March of 2022 and we had active sales that were just sitting waiting to complete that averaged over a million dollars. So this was our this is the first time we've ever seen this in the Nanaimo where the prices went up and actually came back down. So this one, for all intents and purposes, was a million bucks, and then it settled back down to 780. Went up to about 830 that we saw there's a little while ago, or 815 on this one. And then on that other chart we looked at, it actually was dipping down back into the seven. So that's sort of the trend we're heading at here. Interesting part is as these prices went down after COVID, this is when all the economic adjustments were happening and they started doing the interest rate hikes. And typically I would have expected the charts to keep dropping and the prices coming down as the interest rate the rates went up, but enough buyers were hitting our local market that were not mortgage dependent or had significant amount of, or not as mortgage dependent and didn't uh, weren't as reliant on their income qualifying them for what they could afford. Uh, might have pushed out more, or it has pushed out more local buyers that, uh, that weren't able to save up enough, but uh, at this point it, it's looking like things are sort of holding and not, uh, not dropping too much more, but uh, we'll see what happens going forward. Uh, but historically, uh, back if, if they could draw this back another 10 years, back over to about here, the average house price in 2003 was about 150000 So you look at the amount of growth from 150 to 350 to 550 to a million, then back down to upper sevens, low eights. That's a, a pretty steady increase. Okay, next one here is the count of active listings. So this is uh, going to back this back up for a ten year ten year look just to get a longer cast of our shadow. And okay, so this is the historic count of active listings. If we go back to 2013, we had upwards of oh, almost 750 listings sit on the market, and it sort of done this jig jaggy thing. Yeah, during uh, the, the bottom of COVID, we, the inventory levels really dropped at the beginning of 2022, and that's about, about 100 listings, which is not very much at all. We creaked, creaked over 400 back at the beginning, or around this time last year, September, October, 428 on that measurement, and then we dipped all the way to a low here in earlier 2023, looks like about February. That's sitting around two. 250 to 240 somewhere on there and now we're sitting at about 364 that we saw earlier so over the grand scheme of time we're really the inventory is actually higher now than it's been pretty much consistently all the way back to 2015 so almost the last eight years we have more inventory now than we did most of that time so the nice thing about real estate is there's 
always more coming. So if you don't like what's on the market today, check tomorrow. You never know what's coming on the market next. Okay, last one we're going to take a look at is the historic count of sales by month. This one I always find interesting to look at this time of year because some people wonder whether anything happens during November and December, and the answer is yes, it always does. Um, not as much as, uh, so here's, you'll usually see, um, there's odd years, this is, uh, this was the COVID dip, when we all went home and no one even turned on their computers and everyone was wondering what was going to happen. So this one is this bright lime greeny color, neon green, this is an anomaly, that's a pure, pure COVID. Uh, yellow, that's this year, so why we took a bit of a dip there back in April again. Who knows? But typically what we'll find is that you start in January, you go up for the spring market uh, through May, June, then everyone goes off on holidays during the summer. Once again, other than this little really whacked out line here from uh, COVID-19 from 2020, um, uh, or typically we follow this, this trend to go down, down during the summer. It's usually a little bit more of a hump in the fall and then it carries carries on down into December. But if you look at these numbers, even this yellow one's uh, misleading because this is current data and the data just hasn't posted yet. So next month when we do this again, you'll see this one's probably up higher. It's, it, it's gonna be low, but I don't think it'll be that low. That's quite low. Uh, 22 sales in November. Yeah, we're no, November for November 23rd, we're only November 13th and there could be f we don't report on houses that have accepted offers on them that are still subjected, so this is a that's an artificial number. So ignore this downslope from probably about well, from about here down, but up to here it's probably fairly accurate at the beginning or the two weeks ago. So the end end of November would have had uh, real data in it, but but even going forward in the month of November and years past, well you'll have. Um, yeah, we'll have here, that's 100, 125 sales down to a low of about 65. So what does happen in November, December is you have to be a lot sharper on your price if you need to be selling, but there are serious buyers are out there if, uh, if you're on the market and need, need or want to sell during that period. We don't really see a heavy price drop and a big, a big challenge in selling during this period because the competition is usually not as high. There's a lot of a lot of people who aren't super serious about selling over Christmas will take their places off the market. So, anyways, that's uh, that's my quick little rundown. That's well, not very quick. That's a 22 minute rundown on what I'm seeing on the market as of now, as of uh, Monday afternoon, almost four o'clock on November the 13th. If there's anything in particular that you're looking for, or you want to know about, feel free to drop me uh, drop me a note. I can create a custom one of these for you and run down. If you're curious as to what your house is worth in uh, today's market or what the, the odds are that you could be able to get it sold, happy to do that for you well. Uh, what I do is I do something very similar, is go through the market and I play a, a game that I call Better Than Worse Than. We take a look at houses that are somewhat similar to yours. That's a unique part of real estate is that every house is different, every neighborhood's different, a number of the finishings are different, even houses that are built same side by side will have something different about them. So every house is unique and the valuation of them is therefore uh, unique as well. So there's a bit of a comparison that happens in order to uh, figure out what the real value is on a property. So, But if you're curious about the value of your house is, or you got some questions or concerns about the interest rates and upcoming challenges that could be happening with that as uh, we all have our mortgages come up for renewal, uh, feel free to drop me a note anytime. I'd be happy to give you some advice and uh, let, let you know what I'm seeing on the market and what it looks like, how it might affect or in be applicable to you. So anyways, uh, this is Dan Morris, Royal Page Now Realty. If you want to reach me anytime, 250-667-4585. Text, phone, email at dan at danmorris.ca.